Hello and welcome to the She Nerds Out podcast. My name's Kat. I'm Wendy. And I'm Tara. And on today's episode, it's our very first one. Woo! Woo-hoo. Strong women, badass gals. Some of them are more than pals. Our show can be a little gay. But if you're not, that's okay. You can listen and have fun either way. Xena, Star Wars, Doctor Who, guests and music and reviews, Game of Thrones, why Nona too? We promise there's something for you. She nerds out. We're girls that like girls that like dirty things. Dirty things. Hi, guys. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Great. Happy to be here. Awesome. Feeling good. Feeling excited. This is our first episode. It's a rainy, gloomy day in Los Angeles. Rainy, beautiful day in Los Angeles. (laughs) Yeah. So if you found this podcast, you probably put uh, nerd and girl into the iTunes search window. Yeah. And you found us. And you're probably wondering, what the hell is this? Welcome. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we are here to talk about nerdy things and Things that nerdy girls like us like. Yes. yes. Because as the theme song says, we're girls who like girls who like nerdy things. So let's elaborate on that a little <laughs> let's, bit. Let's expand on that. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, we'll be talking about all sorts of sci-fi cool stuff that we like. TV, For sure. movies, characters, so, actors. Wendy, what are some of your favorite um those things that you just mentioned. <laughs> well, <laughs> if we can get sectioned off into various categories, mm. uh, my top three TV person of interest, Xena and the X Files. Ooh, yeah, that's exciting. Yeah. Uh, each have played a very, very important part in my life in one way or another. Mm-hmm. Um, movies, Star Wars, all of it, ranked one A, B, C, three, whatever. <laughs> that's just one giant category of number one Star Wars. Yep. Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Contact. Ooh, very good. And uh, yeah, I've I like most all of sci-fi. Fantastic. Like all the Marvel stuff. So, but those are my big ones. Those awesome. Are my babies. Nice. Tara, how about you? Uh, well, I do love for TV, Xena, of course, Firefly, Doctor Who especially this last season. Uh, she's a, a lady, Doctor Who. Awesome. Uh, she's pretty hot. Um, also, <laughs> Buffy, uh, the classics. Um, some new ones, Winona Earp. Um, oh, yes. The, yeah, the one's out now. Uh, and for movies, Harry Potter, of course. Uh, Hermione is a uh, <laughs> big, big fan of hers. Uh, and also Serenity. Um, cool. Movie. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. All that good stuff. Brown coats. Well, um, for me, TV, Xena. Buffy and X Files. Ah. Uh, and uh, for movies, definitely Star Wars. Uh, as you said, Wendy, it's just sort of it, one big. All of it. Yes, all of it. Your favorite Star Wars movie? Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> the best one. Um, so, yeah, I feel like we'll have lots to talk about. We'll have to have less Jedi talk at some point. Oh, okay. Controversial movie. Oh, we'll get into yes. that. Yes. You played it. I loved it. Please continue. Okay, thank you. And uh, the rest of uh, my other movies is probably going to be um, I do love Harry Potter. I love the Terminator. I love the first, uh, Terminator and Terminator Two. Not as big of a fan of as the uh, of the nah those the rest of them. sequels. I am excited that they're doing a a new Terminator movie where it picks up after T two. Yeah. So we see Sarah Connor being a badass again, which is my probably my favorite part of the Terminator movies. I'm looking forward to that. And what other movies? Yeah, I think that's kind of it. I mean, I love all kinds of shit. Oh, I do yeah. love the Marvel. I'm looking forward to Captain Marvel Captain coming Marvel out. Captain Marvel and the sure cat. we'll talk about that. Yes, I'm also a big Disney fan. Frozen. Nice. This is looking forward to that mm-hmm. coming out Very later good. this year. And the final Star Wars movie, at least in this. The, the Star Skywalker, Wars 9. The Skywalker yes. uh, arc. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm a huge Princess Leia fan, and I have so many opinions about mm. a lot of things to do with her character. So yeah. and I am, we'll get yeah. into it. Can and you tell me Solo. a little bit about what you're wearing? So right what now? I'm wearing is, thank you for asking. I'm wearing one of my favorite Star Wars t-shirts, and it's uh, it's Princess Leia, and she's holding a balloon that happens to be shaped like the Death Star. Uh-huh. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's simple, it's powerful, and I, I, it makes me happy when I'm wearing it. She's kind of in like a power suit type she of thing. Is. It's, I love it. Maybe we'll, we'll put a picture of it <laughs> yeah. up in the, uh, one awesome. of our various... Cool. With yeah. the original bun hair. Yes, Leia too. the buns, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Thank you. So one thing we all had in common, I noticed, was Xena 
And because Zena is what has brought us three here together, uh, this episode is we're we're basically honoring that. And we're gonna it's gonna be a very Zena centric episode. So why don't we kind of get that rolling? All right. Um, so how did you guys first find the show? Uh, I'll start since I was not a young young child when I find Zena. I was uh, it was 1997, mm. and um, I had to work. A weird shift at work and where I had to get up early and Sunday nights though I couldn't sleep and so I would lie in bed and Xena just kept coming on and uh, I would catch an episode here and there and I remember hearing about it and I thought eh, I don't know if I want to watch that and I heard they're making it out of Hercules and I thought Hercules is cute and all but they don't need a Xena spinoff <laughs> and then uh, I caught one of the, the episode where she like gets hit by the tree and almost dies and stuff and uh, and for some reason that was the episode that made me say not only do I love this show <laughs> I really love this show and I feel like this is a big turning point in my world and it was and do you remember the name of the episode mm. <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> and I'm gonna rewatch I should not have asked that question that was a bad <laughs> question I don't if I it's I want to one say before the quest I believe destiny destiny there you go thank you you're um, welcome but yeah it was destiny and then I I liked it and I actually met some Xena fans on CompuServe from back in the day <laughs> <laughs> and the the other yes, yeah Wendy. that's where I started and the two fans <laughs> that I met in CompuServe happened to each live within ten miles of me even though they could have been anywhere in the entire world. And so we had our first little Xena meetup at awesome. Otis's house. His name was Otis. So we met at Otis's house and shared Xena things and watched episodes. And then I, I heard they had a Plano come to town and I said, I'm not going to a convention. I, that, I'm not getting that much into the show. And then like a year <laughs> cut, later, cut I flew two. to Santa Monica for my very first Xena con because Lucy was there and I didn't know anyone and I was all alone. <laughs> and then and then I met people and mm -hmm. and then uh, started dressing up and making little movies. And there you go. Xena, Xena changed my life. Most people I know now are because of cats or because of Xena. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my life. These are two great things. Yeah. And I like how you kind of like, yeah, I made movies and then blah, blah, blah. We're, we're going to get into that. I think that was the short version of your... That was a very short version yeah, of we'll, everything. I think we'll get into that a little later. Tara, how about you? Um, well, I was a little bit younger <laughs> when Zena was first on. Um, I was about, I want to say about 12 oh. when I saw my first episode. And it oh, was, no. is, <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? Awesome. And I remember when she was beating on Gabrielle's chest and I thought, my God, they care so much about each other. Why am I so into this? <laughs> this and is speaking to me. Yeah, it really did. Um, yeah, so I, I loved, and I, it was Sunday, the action pack nice. um, with Her Hercules, and it was like, va was it Vanishing Sun? What was that other? Something the, Sun. Yeah, Vanishing something sun. sun. Yeah, something like that. It was oh, all, wow. yeah, it was all like an action yeah. pack with Hercules, like the three, yeah. two or three shows. Uh -huh. um, so loved that, uh, especially Xena. And then when I was a little bit older, and I went back, thanks to Netflix, which mm -hmm. is, this was, uh, this was in 2004, I want to say. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, Netflix was new. There was no streaming. You had to order the discs. Oh, yeah. So I um, was, you know, perusing online some of my feelings that had, uh, for <laughs> other women that had just been, kept coming back. And I said, oh, well, you know, so I looked up, oh, Xena. <laughs> I remember that show. Wait, what? Oh, they were... Oh, I see now what their um, friendship really was. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense a lot more <laughs> to me now. Why pieces that are coming really together to here? Um, so I said, you know, oh, I, I want to watch this. So I got this Netflix thing, whatever that was back then. Mm. Uh, I waited for the disc. I would get three discs at a time. <laughs> I would wait for them to come in the mail. I was so excited. My my roommate David at the time was like, "Oh man, you really love the show." And I said, "Oh yeah, I'm to so into it." <laughs> and um, yeah. So I just I watched the whole thing over again when I think it was about tw uh, maybe 19 or 20 at mm -hmm. that time. So um, started rewatching it and really loved it. So um, then I saw online um, an ad for the Xena convention and I thought, oh, how strange. And again, I was compelled <laughs> and I thought, I have to go to this. I don't know why. I just yeah. have to go. Amazing. Uh, and I want to, yeah, I want to check it out. So I flew out. I saved my money and I hmm. made a thousand dollar budget for myself. Which was a lot when, you know, you know, it is still, but, it's, you know, <laughs> but then when I'm working, you know, I think it was like a bank teller or something while I was in school, um, 
yeah, I stayed with my money. I came out here. I stayed, you know, a little bit with my sister's friend for a few days and just went to this crazy convention where I ended up meeting some of my friends that are still lifelong friends now. That's so awesome. Yeah. That's I awesome. feel like that's a familiar refrain. Like, I didn't know why, but I had to go. <laughs> exactly. Like Devil's Tower and Close Encounters. They right. were just drawn, just drawn to it. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, similar story to Wendy, I had heard of Xena. I was like, nah, not for some reason it just didn't really appeal to me which is weird because i loved all that kind of stuff fantasy Mm sci-fi crap and then i happened to be watching tv on a weekend and it was the quest and so uh you know it's a fun episode there's a lot going on in the episode you have autolycus being like bruce campbell being the best bruce campbell you know Mm -hmm. very entertaining and then in the middle of the episode there's this uh kiss and very similar, it, it was, I had never seen anything like it on TV. And I was, I was 20 when I saw it in 1997. Mm. I was 20 years old. And it changed my life. It really did. Um, <laughs> and so the next episode, Necessary Evil, also very good. And then A Day in the Life. Was ah, the, I was like, okay, yeah. I, I'm into the show. The show is fun. There's this friendship happening. Right. And it's just a, yeah. So I, I, was, I was hooked. And so... Uh, there was the Santa Monica convention. Mm. Was that your first? It was my first. Mine too. And I mm. forced a friend to come with me because none of my other friends watched the show. And we went and we watched Lucy and she had a sunflower in her yep. head. That's what I most remember. Yep. I also remember uh, Claire Stansfeld was there and it was right around the India part of four mm. where there was a rumor that Gabrielle, Gabrielle's hair gets cut. Oh no! I remember, remember Lucy saying, "I give her a hell of a haircut" or yes. something like that on stage. Yeah, yeah. And people freaked out. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so that was my first convention for Xena, and uh, I was on probably a message board or something. Oh online. yeah, there were a lot of Whoosh. message boards. Going <laughs> yeah, on. possibly. Yeah, was, and someone said, "Hey, there's someone is giving a talk at CSUN about Xena, like an actual lecture, oh. a professor." And so I'm like, well, I got to be there. So I went there. Uh, the, the lecture did not go well. None of the, you know, multimedia aspects of it worked out. So this one just sort of ended up talking a lot. But at the end of it, there's like maybe five people there total. Wow. At the end of it, we're like, hey, let's all go have lunch. And so we, we went to have lunch. And then there's f- maybe four people at that lunch who are now lifelong friends and you know the friends who I ended up like one was a roommate the other one I was a producing partner with and it was just it was the friendships that I have made through the show is probably my favorite part of being a fan of the show yeah uh and then going to conventions with people that I knew you know I was like oh now I have Xena friends and we'd meet up every week or every month have Xena marathons and just turn into this such a great part of my 20s is that Mm -hmm. i got all these cool new friends and we had something in common and it was awesome yeah that's the thing most people said even the later days of the conventions it was about seeing even the even the stars of the show that went it was kind of a family reunion for them too right because they they all gotten to know each other and a lot of the fans were going to see their friends as much as anybody who was on stage so it's true i mean we're all here because of xena absolutely right now knowing each other so yep Good times. Good times. So why don't you tell us more about these Xena movies that you used to make? That's uh, how I first, I mean, you know, you're kind of a, you're kind of a big deal in the, in the Xenoverse convention world. How did we start? <laughs> what was our first one? I don't even remember what the first, oh, yeah, well, first I started making music videos because they had the music video contests and you could submit it and win a gift certificate for merchandise. And so I made a, you know, I'd done some editing and so I made a music video and I sent it in and it got rejected. So I said, what? Oh, no. I thought that was pretty good. What is happening? So I was like, oh, I'll show you creation. <laughs> you reject my video. I'm going to get some videos every year for the rest of your time. So I think the first thing Deborah Abbott and I did, we went to New Zealand when Lucy did the vagina monologues over there. You can say that. You can say vagina. <laughs> the vagina monologues <laughs> in New Zealand with Danielle Cormack, who was awesome. And I forget the other actress's name, but she was in the episode with all the Amazons fighting. And mm-hmm. um, she was a, a new, Madeline Sammy, I think may have been her name. Okay. But so we went to see Lucy and we went to all the Xena locations. We went to Bethel's Beach. We went to um, 
other places sure. that I can't remember right now. A lot of other <laughs> Xena location scenes, and we would, you know, film everything and for for just our own selves. But mm-hmm. when I got home, I decided to make a Xena like a tr- video of our trip to New Zealand and combine scenes of the places we were with the scenes from the show and made it this kind of long Xena. Here's our trip to New Zealand video. Yep. And we thought, oh, let's send it to creation. Maybe they'll want to show it. So I did, and I didn't really hear back. And then we were looking at the schedule for a convention somewhere in maybe New Jersey or somewhere that we weren't even going to, and we were on the schedule. Our video was on the schedule. It's like, oh, they played it. And so Deb and I thought, well, let's send them something else. So <laughs> I, I think at the next thing, Deborah made a Xena movie that I was in. Okay. Like an actual, we did a bunch of different things. So we made the Xena movie with them, um, where we were actually Xena and Gabrielle back right. in the thing. And then made one where she was a life-size Xena doll that I ordered online. <laughs> Deliver and, X. Deliver X. That's the and first we made, one I saw. Um, nice. <laughs> True Love Never Dies was the actual where we're Xena and Gabrielle. And, um, uh, and actually, the girl who played young Gabrielle in that movie went off. She was an actual actress, and she starred with Lucy in... It was either Vampire Bats or Locusts. When wow. Lucy did that. So she was actually in a movie with Lucy later. Um, That's awesome. And then I uh, made Spirit of Xena, where Xena... And, like jumps into the soul of this woman and this nerdy woman. And so we made a bunch of different little videos here and there together. And then I met Tara who said, I make videos and she made a music <laughs> video or she wrote like, a little, little video, which I thought was awesome at the time. Oh, and and I look was... back and I'm like, Oh God, oh, oh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. All... It was so much fun. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you were, you got, you had a little part in one of Deb and my movies, Spirit of Xena. I think you were, you had a little extra role. Yes. Extra. <laughs> nice. And uh, when we were getting to know each other and then what did we make first together? Oh, um, so with Kalisto. When I, yeah, I dressed as Kalisto. We went to the Ren Fest and nice. did interviews and just made like a cute like montage thing. That's and brilliant. Of Kalisto interviewing Stranger. That was pretty fun. That yes. was funny. Oh, what was it called? Stranger. Something Stranger. Yeah. Intimate, Intimate Stranger. stranger. Oh, that was nice. it. That was, it was kind of like a little, we liked like what Ellen did and like random interviews of the, and that was, I like that. So I still like that. And then we made, um, still have that costume. Nice. Haven't tried it on in good, a while. Good to but, know. You know. Yeah. That was a good costume. <laughs> uh, and then we made your Callisto movie where you were Callisto dating people and Aphrodite <laughs> yeah. was the love counselor and I don't even remember what it was called. But <laughs> yeah. That was right. fun. But then we made Wicked, a Xena musical, which yep. had the better reception than I ever even dreamed yeah, that it would. We have to thank and Creation for the awesome placement and they yes. had trusted us from what we had done before. And um, we got placed in the at the 2009 convention between um, right who, before Rob, right before I Rob. Think. It oh, was separate wow. between yeah, and right before so it was our movie, which was about 45 minutes long. So it was it was a lot, you know, it wasn't a short video. Sure. Um, then we had Rob, and then right after Rob was like Lucy and Renee. So it was on a Sunday. Yeah, it's huge. It, it they was couldn't huge... have set us up better. The room was packed. And our the video played, and we got the. We are so nervous. We're sitting in the back, we're like we're gonna throw up. And we're like, oh no, oh my god, they're not gonna like it. They're not gonna like it. And then people was this just like the first time people had seen it. Yes. Oh yeah. And oh, the story of how we even got to that convention because that's the year I moved here. So we, uh, we I was packing up a truck, moving. We're both from Texas, Wendy and I, and I was moving to LA in uh, 2009. And uh, so we were editing, and I was packing. Wendy was finishing editing um, round the clock, and then we drove out here. Uh, and we got here uh, Friday night, like late Friday night. So that, and then the movie was Sunday. Um, so we're waiting. We're so nervous. We're like, did we even watch this thing back before we? <laughs> oh, no. oh, we did. We, I remember we watched it a oh lot. God. Just yeah, check it. Over, and, I mean, yeah. And the thing was, every time we watched it, we enjoyed it. You usually get sick of what you've done by the sure. time you have to watch it that many times. But the parts we liked every time, we still really liked. So I thought, okay, I'm feeling good about this. Yeah. But, you, you know, when you edit something yourself, you're so nitpicky about it. And you're you, just you like, oh, my God. You can see what's wrong with it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we were so nervous. And then, um, yeah, people loved it. And we were so glad that they did. And at the end, you know, everyone stood up and cheered. Yeah, and it was, it was like perception. the best moment. And then that's awesome. the best part was um, the creation host. You know, what was it? Uh Adam, or Adam, one, Adam. Yeah, one yeah he said, uh, guys, can you uh, come on back here? Uh, Rob Tappert would like to speak with you. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then we we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no big so deal. we're like, oh, God. Uh, yeah, and we went back, and Rob had some really awesome things to yeah. say that still, so cool. the, like, you know, changed my life and made me think, man, that, that is just amazing when the person that is the creator of your favorite show has 
such wonderful things to say and is so encouraging and really nice and and just uh, really lifted us up, you know, and really encouraged what we had done and all the work we put into it. So that really meant a lot to us. So it made um, it worth the marathon drive. Oh, yes. No <laughs> sleep for a few days. Totally. The, the first big Amazon song and dance number happened and the crowd just, <laughs> everybody cheered and loved it. And I thought, okay, this is going yeah, well. This is going to And then, well. yeah. So every, and then, you know, tons of people were ordered copies and um and then yeah, pro- it, all our profits our went to charity was... aspca <laughs> nice, nice um, job. Yeah. yeah it was all worth worth the effort so yeah. it was fun can people still see it today how would how, how can people find it they can that you can see a preview um if you go on youtube i think I'm pretty sure it's still there if you just wicked the xena musical and it shows you one of the numbers that one of the first okay. numbers that's in there and then um you can order it online you can still, as oh, well great. yeah it's still, it's still, still available it. and we're uh, we we're gonna look facebook into a copy page. yeah yeah facebook page um and also uh, we're gonna try to like online so you know maybe through amazon or some way that Something. like a digital download that makes it easier because nice. now it's different we used to you know, burn the, the DVD, yeah. send it out with a nice, cute, like a cover. We have extras and all that good I ha- stuff. I, I have one. So, oh, <laughs> nice. You sent one to me. Someone right. actually wrote me a few weeks ago wanting a copy and I have not gotten back to them. I don't have a way to make a copy here, I don't think. So mm-hmm. here, I mean, with the move and everything, I'm living out right still of what I drove out here within my car. So I, I need to write them back and just say, I can get you one as soon as I'm able to, but <laughs> hang yeah. in there. And yeah. we'll thank Rob for his continued support. He bought two copies. Oh, that's so, right. He did. Yeah. Yeah, that's very. So cool. That's amazing. When he's, we saw that, we we're like, "Are you kidding me?" He's, <laughs> he's genuinely a nice guy. Yeah, he is. He's I a saw very him. Nice guy. About a year ago. Oh, and cool. Talked to him a little bit at nice. a convention, and yeah, he's great. I nice. like Rob. I like him a lot. So, do you guys have anything planned? So, there's a convention now happening. A year and a half. Twenty <laughs> fifth anniversary. Yeah, twenty fifth. Do you guys have anything planned? Uh, well, we have a year and a half. <laughs> well, we usually guys, do. It's just been announced. Need to get on this. Right? We'll yeah, plan we, it. It's it, a, it. It takes us about yeah. that long to get. <laughs> Anything the convention going, is so. August 2020. We'll plan until <laughs> July 2020. Yeah, that's the we'll kind of we roll. <laughs> we we have a big idea for about a year, and then we're like, oh, crap. Now we have to, yeah, we got to do it. Do yeah. Well, now we live in the same town. There's no <laughs> yeah. excuse not to get it. Right, because before when I was living here, because we did another a feature film um, that Kat, you helped us with. Thank you very oh, much. You're very welcome. Um, and it was very difficult. It took us. Uh, 10 years. About, yeah, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's yeah, when we started. We thought of the idea originally. Um but yeah, living at a part in different cities, you know, fly in on the weekends, shoot a little bit, and then, you know, not come back for six months. So it took a while. Um, so I, I, we both went through a lot of life stages during the filming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like, One oh, of our look, actors Tara's gained 15 pounds. Oh, look, she's getting again. Good for Tara. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> different things, but it was a lot of fun. So yeah, we, we're going to do something. something. You yeah. Have, you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So conventions were such a big deal i just remember it was it was an event every year um i was luckily i live in la so i didn't the big one every year was in either it was in burbank for a while it was in per, pasadena, pasadena for a while, burbank then burbank and then down, uh near the airport a couple yeah. times but it was such an event it was something i looked forward to every year yeah. oh yeah yeah it was like you know now you kind of see it with winona earp and the erpers i feel like they've got a lot of the spirit that we did they're having their own conventions they're yeah. they're so passionate right now at the time of this recording, where they're fighting to save the show, they've bought oh, wow. billboards in Times Square or ads in Times Square. They're holding up signs in the background of the Today Show. Wow. They're they're like the Zenites of of our day, and awesome. it was you had that kind of passion. We never had to fight to save our show, but you know you had all those charity things that came up and all mm-hmm. the passion of the, the Zenites and all the creativity at the conventions, and it was huge. And yeah. it was sort of I don't know, you know, it's it's one of those things that like a lot of women flock to. Mm-hmm. And just really sort of a lot of them found their, who they were through that too. And so true. Yeah. Friendships, relationships. And a lot of time you finally think, oh, I, f- I finally found some people like me. Yeah. That I, you know. That yeah, they get it's, me. It's, yeah. And it's a different world. It really is when you mm-hmm. go to the conventions. Um, and you really, you get prepared, you know, <clears throat> I, you know, I, am working out more before I go, <laughs> not only just to look better, but diet. because I know I'm going to be awake like for, yeah. you know, 20 hours a day. Um, and you know, I'm got to get my coffee. I got to get my, you know, whatever I need to eat or drink to stay awake <laughs> and have all the fun I can. So it's really just a party for a whole weekend. So, and also the, the food's not great. So no. you're gonna be eating a lot of junk. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the, a lot of drinking. The, the old daily grill over at <laughs> <Yes>. the Burbank <laughs> airport. And it's not cheap. No. Yeah. It's not. You got to save that money. Cause you know, you know, 
eighty percent of what you're bringing is going to the food, <laughs> and then you gotta get the and autographs. Cena pictures. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now you know the convention's been gone for several years, but now there's a Zenite retreat, which I, has kind of sort of picked up the torch and is now bringing that same sort of feel um, outside of the you know conventional <laughs> convention. Um, and I went a couple years ago, and it's so cool to see. There's still some of the sort of you know the people you've seen at a million conventions, but also a lot of new young people finding the show, which is so nice to see. The this, this show still affects people and it still matters to people. Um, so yeah, I feel like the fandom has really not lost anything no. without you know from the conventions being gone. I think it helps too. It since it was medieval, it's not dated. It's not dated by real not really by like if it was set in the 80s and then it felt weird and dated. I right. mean, it's, it was just this campy, fun show mm -hmm. just set in this whole different world that um, it's going to hold up, I think. And I still th I'm still, i still convinced they're going to do something, like a TV movie or... Reboot or something. I, I'm, I'm not convinced we've seen the last of Lucy and Renee. I hope not. I, in those parts. Anything, I... If Harrison Ford can come back as Han Solo, <laughs> right. we can bring them back as seen in gabrielle yeah and so there was the reboot that they were going to be doing yeah that was not was without the original cast members um and that kind of went away that's gone mm -hmm. but there, that's yeah. a good sign though right that 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 you know the powers that be still think that it's a viable franchise i guess i think it is it's reboot the right. time of the reboot and that, that people care that it's done the right way that they didn't just want to do it any old way they wanted to right. make sure to be true to the original yeah for sure so we'll see. Hopefully there's more Lucy and Renee in those characters to come. I hope so. We had an idea of what we'd wanted to want to see of them in retirement <laughs> and having to like a funny <laughs> thing where they, they have to go, you know, they maybe they live in the, the life and like their homestead. Right. They're kind of living the simple life a little bit. With their and cats and with, the, yeah, <laughs> whatever cats. you have and goats, whatever they have <laughs> back in there. And uh, then they've got to like go save the day again and they're you know trying to get back in the back in the leather yeah, squeezing back into in the that, costumes you know yeah. stretch a little bit you know, and then to... saying hey i still look good yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do babe you so. do yeah. <laughs> so yeah i i hope we see that i think the world's ready for it i think the world needs it they need xena back and all these you know you got captain marvel you have wonder woman you need xena back in some form agreed so speaking of xena some more mm -hmm. we want to talk about our favorite episodes yeah okay i mean the quest for me because it was the first one i saw and it's such a huge sort of subtext really text Definitely. moment yeah. interesting that your first episode that really got you into it didn't even have that much lucy that's very interesting it, you it say that had it's so true bruce campbell being xena yeah i mean it had her in a very key moment key moments but sure and she's also like reflected in water yeah. a few times um, no, it's a very interesting yeah. point, <laughs> but I can see why it, 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 yeah. you. it was very impactful. Yeah. Uh, and a day in the life is just, I can yeah. watch that a million times. Yeah. It's yeah. It's such a good episode. I love the more comical episodes. When we were talking, Wendy and I were talking earlier about our favorite episodes. I was naming off, you know, many happy returns, all the, you know, uh, oh, foes, femmes and Gem, gems. That, gems cause we made a, or a fan gems. film that was similar to that gin. Yeah. Yeah. Gins. So I always mix up the names. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so things like that. Um, yeah. And she's like, Oh, interesting that she likes mostly the more dramatic episodes. Yeah. And I like the, the comedy. I'm, you know, but I still appreciate the dramatic episodes, but <laughs> That's good. yeah, that carries off. That carries over into our normal TV watching too. Pretty much. Like yeah. The fun comedies. I'm like going for the dark and moody dramas. <laughs> But, <laughs> so what are your favorites? Um, the, the Mini Happy Returns, the, mm -hmm. uh, what's some of the other ones? Sorry, I have my list here Please. that I'm going to refer to. You should. Because um, I don't want to mess this up. So, oh, the Quill's Mightier. You know, I really like enjoyed the Aphrodite episodes because <laughs> I just think, you know, I think, well, she's funny. She's she hot. I, two <laughs> things that I enjoy whenever I see it. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, You Are There. <laughs> That's That was just like a really random one. But, but it's fun. Whatever Odin's line where he's just like, damn it. Because <laughs> he really was invisible. Out to me. Yeah, because he was, he was invisible. It just, I think it cracked me up. It, you know, at that point I'd rewatch the whole show or I had, you know, this was into my Netflix rewatching. Right. Um, and it really 
just solidified. Even the wacky episodes where you're like, oh, where's this going? Um, it, they're just a lot of fun. And it really, I love seeing Xena and Gabrielle just being wacky and goofy. Uh, yeah, goofy. Yeah. Can't be. Love that part. Yeah. Well, my favorites were, I think my favorite, and I couldn't even tell you why, was uh, a family affair where Gabrielle's little monster son yeah. shows up Big and, monster son. and but it was the one the reason i liked it it's where xena found gabrielle again after she fell into the fiery pit and then xena went through the sin trades and tried to get her back and then she's like chasing through the forest do you think she's chasing the evil doppelgangers at gabrielle or whatever and and it turns out to be really and it's something about their reunion i just love that i just the feel yeah. of it the windmills the tone i don't know why that and, and i don't even i i think it's my favorite i don't know but hmm. I also like Ides of March. Ooh, Mar- was just great. I thought Hudson as Kalisto was so good in that. I just love the shooting. I loved all of TJ Scott's episodes, hmm. his directing mm-hmm. Kalisto and Return of Kalisto. And- That's one of my favorites too. Yeah. Ides of March. It's, it's just. I ugh. thought it was really well done. Um, yeah. I, you know, Sin Trades I liked. Mm-hmm. I just, yeah, the, the ones that were really well done dramatically were my favorite. Oh, and then uh, One Against an Army because that fight scene was yes. amazing. Yeah. You watch that, you can't, you just want to go like fight everybody. <laughs> Because it's such a cool fight scene that we tried to mimic in <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> there are very levels of success, but because that thing was awesome. So those are those are my favorites for just various um, whatever reasons. Like I said, I like the dramatic. Well done. Yeah, well, their chemistry is off the charts. So whether they're doing comedy or drama, it's, oh, it's yeah. a lot, lot of fun. It's incredible how they lucked out with these two actors. They really did. They wasn't did. I don't luck. Think, it was fate. Well, <laughs> yes, and I don't think they knew what they had yeah. until they started delivering, and then they're like, "Oh, we can actually give these." They have range. They can do yeah. funny. They can do dramatic. They could do romantic. They can do everything. They really <laughs> lucked out. These two women are incredible. Yeah, I'm sure it's nice when you, you know, especially Lucy. You know, she was the original choice. Got sick. Mm-hmm. The Vanessa Angel. They, I think they tried a few other people that didn't want to come over during pilot season. Right. And finally they said, what about Lucy? And they tried. I think he liked her all along, but she wasn't a name. She wasn't as established. Right. And it fell to Lucy and, you know, she was amazing. And then they, Renee had been in the TV movie also, one of the TV movies right. for Hercules. And, um, yeah, I think what, it's nice once, I'm sure for the writers, once they see what the actors can do, they're like, hey, we can, we can go deeper than with this than we might have originally thought we could. Mm-hmm. And, and that's nice. And they, they're, both very talented and, and the writing was good and all the all the casting was great mm-hmm. for everyone else as well but it was it was one of those it just it was magic it just everything fell together perfectly mm-hmm. and, yeah. what storylines did you guys not like as much were you not into if anything you so, know i remember season five early i remember there was a big thing about they they got on some new writers and it was you know the, i think it was when i mean i didn't mind xena being pregnant but like it felt like it kind of stepped back into her people not really liking that they were shying away from the potential subtext mm. and and it was there was a little something kind of missing i mean i don't know that i really didn't like any of the storylines but i remember at some point it felt like it kind of got back on track right um yeah i don't know why those <clears throat> episodes where Essentially, you know, Xena was with a man or flirting with a man. <laughs> Those didn't really speak to me in the same really? way. Really? I don't know why. But, <laughs> so, but uh, you know, when she was with with Aries or, you know, I was okay with that because I was just hot. Right, you know, for like, sure. That was, uh, you know. It's, she got a pass on that. Yeah. Just. <laughs> <laughs> no one can blame her. Aries No, no. I mean, special. they had chemistry, but, you know, it still res- respected her um, relationship. <laughs> special friendship with sure. gabrielle yes, yes. <laughs> what about you any storylines you frowned upon um yeah for some reason season five is probably my least favorite season yeah i'd have to go back and look at some of the episodes i'm sure there's some stuff i liked in there but um i don't think any of my favorites are part of those um the india stuff gabrielle being a pacifist yeah was i mean i understand it was part of her journey right but um, none of those episodes really spoke to me, I guess. I agree. But when you got to Ides of March and Gabrielle picked up that sword, it made uh, all the pacifist stuff. I remember just freaking point. out when she picked up the sword that's and started 
gutting all those soldiers. And I remember thinking this would not have had the impact without the whole pass of a storyline. So you're, at least it had a good payoff. You're totally right. But yeah, I remember she had that little thing, like a little powder compact that she was blowing and yes. blowing powder into people's faces and everybody was very disappointed. <laughs> but then she got her warrior self back. So it was, it was good. She certainly did. Yeah. Um, what else? I don't know. Yeah. There's nothing I really, I mean, okay. Uh, Finn might desert or not. Oh, the wait, friend in need. Friend, no. Oh. What was the end? Was it friend, friend in, need? in need? Yeah, one and two. Yeah, that it, might deserve its own special. Kit. I think it does. Well, because yeah, I mean, my <laughs> overall thought was, I liked the episodes. I you know I did I wasn't as devastated as a lot of people were. I mean, I remember watching it with a group of people, and mm. they were very very upset people for the first time watching it. Yeah. And we actually saw it a week before everybody else because she got like a satellite feed. So mm. we were able to see the finale and everybody was just very upset at what happened. And mm-hmm. I, w- I left and I went home because I was mm. just tired of all the hating on it and yeah. all this. And then I realized when I got home, I have no one to talk about this with because no one else had seen, you know, it was, oh. it, it, we saw it like the Sunday morning before it aired that following weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mind it. I, my big, I kind of always thought it might end with her death in some way but i just and the episodes were well done i just Mm -hmm. the idea of how the reason she felt like she needed to stay dead who she died for i just thought i didn't really like that it was it didn't really hold up yeah her yeah that that part of the plot was just like well but really though does she really need to yeah it's like it wasn't even her fault they attacked her she fought back it burned down what are you gonna do yeah and it was redemption right that was the her whole arc yeah was you can redeem yourself yeah but that kind of was not at all a part of that ending yeah and that's why we changed the ending in wicked as Xena yes. musical <laughs> <We> <laughs> and rob it. said you guys did a better ending oh, than we did yes hey. yes yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah so, so but also so, but, in, in his defense like rob got a lot of negative yeah kickback from that right but I, th- I think i either heard him say or read somewhere that he had every intention of bringing her back in yeah. a movie mm-hmm. or right. some sort of you know some new and and you know version of, of the show and so in his mind it wasn't the end of the story it was setting up what came next yeah and then exactly that, that never happened or hasn't happened and so he kind of got you know he was not a very popular guy for a long time as I've learned, sometimes your favorite characters, in theory, die. <laughs> but mm-hmm. in your own mind, you find reasons that they didn't really die. They came back. <laughs> That's how you live with it. <laughs> so, um, or they fake their death, whatever. But uh, yeah, so Xena somewhere, I'm sure, came back. She's alive and well, even if it was through our movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we written ending. Awesome. They He's walked off into the sunset. Yes. They're, As yeah. they should. <laughs> Soon to come out of retirement. And, uh, you know, Let's hope. whenever they do their next thing yeah <laughs> but it didn't it didn't that ending didn't take away all the love of the show and agreed and the enjoyment of it mm-hmm. and telling her story and i still love the show yeah I, I held off on that episode because at that point when i was re-watching it i'd gone to the convention and heard oh. about it and and i just said you know what i'm good i don't need uh to watch it so i didn't see it for probably about three or four more years <laughs> i Whoa. just yeah until finally um I don't know. It was just it was being watched at a, somewhere I went, and I said, "Oh, I guess I'll watch it now." And yeah, I was like, "Oh gosh, I'm really glad that I didn't watch it till now." You know, so I've, um, I didn't. I mean, I didn't hate. It. I, I I didn't like again the whole redemption thing, but I, um, I, I was fine with holding off as long as I did. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but like you said, Wendy, it was they were beautifully shot. Oh, well, yeah, they looked great. Um. Yeah, they were they were good episodes. It's just you know, and I thought you know I was always a Xena. She was you know if you pick Xena Gabrielle, I was a Xena girl, a Lucy girl. Mm-hmm. And um, but in that episode especially, I thought Renee was I I thought she was really even better than usual. I mean, she was always great, but I just loved Renee in those episodes. I mm-hmm. thought she she raised her game even more for sure. But yeah, uh, yeah, they were well done. It's just it's hard call as a you know creator to. End your character, end your show. And it's hard to please everybody. Yeah. I mean, can you think of a show that has that ended, that knew they were ending, that handled the exit of their characters well, that everyone universally loved? I, uh, it would be hard to find that show. I don't, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I mean, especially in this kind, you know, maybe, you know, generic 
hospital cop show maybe sure. but the passionate sci-fi show fans if you end a show you're you're not gonna make everybody happy no can you imagine if they had twitter back then what uh, oh my that? gosh <laughs> would have been bad yeah that would have been brutal but it'd been fun to watch yeah. <laughs> live tweeting Zena Zena would have been really fun yeah, yeah. that would have been cool oh except for gosh. that and then it would have gone all oh, down okay. oh, you know. <laughs> oh no what's happening okay <laughs> That would have been interesting. Yeah. Back in the day, though, you had you had the little little fake villages where you could get your little avatar and go visit the little tavern and go visit other oh, Xena really? fans. Do you remember that? No. And you get like you could go talk to other little Xena fans. You'd go in the tavern, or you'd go in this some <laughs> other place, and like your little avatar. You, most people had like a little picture of Lucy or Xena, you know, or Gabrielle, and you're waking your way around and you chat with people and the stuff, or or then they had the generic message boards. I remember doing that. I had a little avatar. Nice. Walking around. Who was your avatar? I'm sure it was Xena. No. I'm sure it was in some Well, there form. are just like 50 Xenas. <laughs> I'm sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. All, all various. Xenas. And sometimes, you know, or someone would have, just have a dog or a, <laughs> a weird creature or something. You know, most of them had Xena, Gabrielle, little pictures walking around. Yeah, there are a bunch of different pictures of Xena. We aren't all the same ones. but I don't remember doing that. <laughs> I do remember <laughs> obsessively checking Mary D's site oh, for yeah. rumors and spoilers. Yep. Uh, going into Whoosh. And yep. checking, they had very well written written articles and they did insightful show recaps. Yeah, I felt and before I had friends who were uh, Zenites, that's where I kind of felt that was the community, right? Like mm-hmm. because of the inter- this new thing called the internet, you could be part of this community and never, you know, know anybody or leave your house. Yeah, and that's that's part of the reason I went to my first convention was it was Missy Good's uh, message boards, fans of hers and her writing and her mm-hmm. fan fiction that um, they. They were talking about the convention, and so I they were having a get together of her fans or whatever. And I thought, well, I'm a lot of these people don't know each other. I'm not going to be the only one that doesn't know anyone. So I thought I might as well go and see what's up and get a right random roommate. And I think no, I stayed by myself the first time. But yeah, you you just sort of throw yourself into this community because you just want to meet other people that like the show so and it's a very welcoming community yeah there's no more supportive group of people than the Zenites. i found yeah. yeah yeah like i said most of our friends now came from a lot of them came from that show yeah so it's uh, it was a good experience overall changed my life same here same here <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. i was 12 yeah. and i discovered that your show. voice has changed <laughs> same here Thank you. <laughs> you wouldn't so, know me without it <laughs> that's right i wouldn't know i wouldn't know um yeah so many people sometimes i forget now my friends i'm like yeah. oh my god i met you at a xena convention yeah. you know or i know you because of xena it yeah it's wild i've got friends coming visiting from australia and scotland awesome. um next month that you know i'm like oh Zena and friends in San Francisco. It's like I can visit anywhere now and be, and I know someone because of Zena and I can stay with that person if I want. You go on you know. a Zena tour. Yeah, you really could of all the countries. Mm-hmm. So. so if you're going to introduce somebody, if you meet someone, some strange person who's never seen the show, what episode or episodes would you uh, introduce them to? Like, What do you think is a good you know, first one or two episodes to get somebody, okay, this is, this is kind of what the show's about. I feel like I used to have a standard answer, but I can't remember what the episodes were. So you go first. (laughs) Thanks. Um, Uh, uh, Again, I go back to, um, Oh my goodness. A day in the life. Uh, that's I, think yeah. that, I think that would be the yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, that's the one because they're, they're so funny. They're, it's so campy, but their chemistry together, it's, you know, it shows that the show has heart. Um, has a sense yeah. of humor. Yeah. It doesn't take itself too seriously. Exactly. Right. It, it knows what it is and it's not, you know, trying to be something else, but you also see the range very clearly that, yeah, oh, wow, sure. this is something different, something special. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm trying to think too, if there was a, a more dramatic because that one was fun and I, I think that's the one I would show for sure I'm just trying to think if there was like a dramatic standalone by itself that's not like you don't have to know the story going in or out one against an army I'm thinking one against an army would be the one like a show them day in the life and and uh one against an army mm-hmm. those two I yeah I guess what I go with one against an army is Xena being her most yeah. badass yeah arguably I think um, so. And you get the their relationship. You you get that these people are very yeah. important to each other. And this is a big fucking deal. And she, Zena just takes on 
an army. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's a great. It's a really good. That's my episode. favorite fight scene. I think that would be the one. Uh, unless it's the pilot, also. But I think if minus <laughs> the pilot, which I think the pilots, yeah, I would show them some of the late. Like here's what here's where it's going. Yes, I feel like middle of season two is when the show knows what it is. Yeah. It kind of feels like this is they've, they've stepped into their characters. They know the characters, the writers are kind of, okay, we're writing to these two actors. I feel like middle of season two is starting there going forward is probably some of the strongest, Mm -hmm. the strongest episodes. Yeah. And it's when I'm a Gabrielle fan. So it's when she's most favorite Gabrielle outfit. Oh, the, um, bilious green sports bra. Ah, Sports bra and the little skirt. And I like the long, I like the red hair as well. I like uh, Old Aries Had a Farm, pers- the the little blue. That's great. The blue, you know, just for a special one. Sure. But yeah, the <laughs> green top. I'm also a Gabrielle costume. fan yeah. Yeah. myself. We'll call it fan right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like the safe, yeah. non-creepy way to call it. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I do, when, you know, when she does, she goes for the shorter hair. Like in, like in six, really, is mm-hmm. when I feel like she is... Zena's equal when it comes to kicking ass. Like she's got the size and she I feel can hold her own and yeah. Right. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, it was it was she was the one that was like the development, you know, from little sweet farm girl yeah. to what she was in season six. And um yeah, it was it's really a lot of it's of, the story of her journey. It's kind of Gabrielle's show. Yeah. You'd like to think that. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Discuss. I mean, who? I agree. I mean, she changes the most, yeah. right? She has the biggest arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah, I like. I like the red velvet. I used to wear that outfit. Oh, nice. <laughs> when I could fit in that outfit, <laughs> I wouldn't wear it now. But I wore it back in the day. Nice. It was fun. I said, "Mom, can you help me make this outfit for this thing?" <laughs> don't ask questions, Mom. Don't Just ask, don't ask why. Just um, for fun, one episode, uh, we'll we'll bust out. You can bust out the red velvet. I'll bust out the Xena costume from Wicked, and then Kat, you can wear my Kalisto costume. Perfect. And we'll just see what happens <laughs> when we try to wear the in. Xena. She's got the dark <laughs> hair. That's happens. right. Yeah, yeah. you've got the blonde. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I need. To, I have the Xena. Outfit whatever we want to do, let's just see. <laughs> I'll see bring it happens. with me. That would be a great uh, Instagram. It'll be like story. Uh, Gabrielle. That sounds are great. you with child? <laughs> you look different. <laughs> It'll be Z- it'll be Gabrielle when she was pregnant with hope is what it's gonna look like, and I put that red velvet back on. Well, how much give is in that Xena costume? Because I I feel like not much. Okay, it's yeah. very. <laughs> give me give me a couple weeks. It was give me a couple months. <laughs> sewn around my twenty four year old body. <laughs> it's much different. Oh my gosh, it was. Bit, yeah, years ago. yeah. Oh ten, my god. Ten years ago, that two thousand nine convention. Oof. Mm. Wow. Crazy. Let's um, all think about that. Let's all think about that for a second. <laughs> now I'm sad. Oh. Um, I thought of another great Gabrielle costume. Fallen Angel when she's an archangel. Oh, that was good. Yeah, that that's, was a cool one. Yeah, that's pretty good. That was good. I like that episode a lot. Yeah, that was... It was the first one mm-hmm. back from Ides of March, right? Cause they're, yeah, they're, after they got yeah. crucified, went up yeah. to... See, as we go, we remember all these things, and that's why we're going to do an assignment, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to do, we're going to... Talk, talk about that. Yeah, so each episode, before each episode, I th- we're going to go ahead and watch, assign ourselves one or two episodes, mm-hmm. so that next week, and you know, we continue our, since we are at the core, this is a sci-fi nerd, she-nerd podcast, but um, we we want to first and foremost celebrate Xena. That's mm-hmm. how we all came together. So Xena is the heart of this podcast. Yeah, and we're going to go through, and we're going to watch a couple episodes of Xena before each show and then discuss, um, uh, just do a little reviews, some thoughts. Um, sure. We'll have, cause now rewatching it, we'll have much, you know, different views, different things were different places on our lives and oh, yeah. different reactions to certain things. And just seeing that, uh, the fun of doing that. So, so, and on that note, what we've talked about, what we would call this segment, Xena corner, the village a little bit, we might need some help naming this segment yeah if if there's anyone out there listening um <laughs> <laughs> two or three, three people, yeah. my mom right <laughs> yeah i told some friends they're from from my Please dog's send, instagram yeah uh, <laughs> they're gonna listen i think <laughs> he's here everyone rose here my Bro. dog um he's yeah very good yeah he's so good he's not even snoring yet that's great um uh, but yeah so anyone out there if you have any idea of what we can call like our xena segments um let us know we want to hear because 
we run out of creative things to do and our brains get tired. Yes. So <laughs> we need some help. Yes, please. Yeah. It's interactive. So, so please interact. Yes, please. Yeah. And what else can we talk about? Xena wise? I think we've covered a lot of stuff. Xenopop Funko's coming out yes. this year. What's, I don't know if you collect them, but I kind of do. What's new in Z- the Xenoverse? So there's some stuff going on. Xenopops. There's the... Well, that's mainly it. <laughs> well, the retreat, the retreat is coming up. The, the convention up. in a year and a half that tickets are already on sale for. Yeah. Um, the retreat. Yeah, it's... um, I. And the Xenopop oh, Funko's. And there's a there's a new Xena comic. Ah. Oh, um, yes. I have... It's, I think it... I don't think it's started yet, but they've they've I've seen some uh, articles Ooh. promoting it, so that'll be that'll be good. I like comics. I'll I I'll, like I'll jump into that. Yeah. Get and, the two it, comics. And also, it, it, if you guys have any ideas, uh, anybody out there, <laughs> um, about what you'd like to see Wendy and I do at the oh. next convention, maybe give us some ideas too. Um, we'll see what we can do and maybe keep updated on what's going on and just make it a fun that thing. That's a great yeah. idea. Well, we're happy to take suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little suggestion box. Yeah, maybe um, we'll get inspired as we rewatch. Yeah, that's well, yeah. I think it'd be great, and it's we have just the perfect amount of time to do that and uh, get some ideas. So, what episode should we assign ourselves for next week? I think we start from the top. Yeah, yeah. Start from the go top. way way back. Yeah. Okay. Just go for it. And then it'll be chronological. Or should we? Okay. Or I don't know. Should we go in like everyone, or just take highlights from each season? I think we definitely have to start with the pilot. Uh, you're right. It's a good starting place. But yeah, we, we don't have to stick to the yeah chronological chronological. Well, we'll we could what? pick a pick an episode out of a bowl. <laughs> we could, do that. We could bowl. draw out an episode <laughs> today. We'll be watching yeah. random order. <laughs> yeah, we could put all the episodes up on a wall, and then we could get a shock room, and we could throw it at the <laughs> wall. And whatever it hits, that's what we're gonna watch. And. Then we'll fix the wall. And we'll yeah. do it again next Make week. sure all the animals are far away <laughs> yes. from the wall. Yeah. All right. I think the pilot. Let's we'll start with the pilot. Okay. And then uh, go from there. Yeah. Because I'd like to. We had it on the other day, so we kind of saw it. And sadly, we were like, "What was his name?" And it was Draco. We couldn't remember Draco's name. Draco. So he comes back, right? We see. Oh, him? he comes yeah. back yeah. quite a few times. Okay. I think he never dies. I think he never was killed. I think he made it through. That's right. He was to the in, time jump. Uh, I forget that in the episode, but he definitely comes back at least once or twice. Wasn't he in love? He like there was a spell. comedy of Eros where yeah He's he in was love in love with Gabrielle. Gabriel? Yeah. yeah, that sounds right. And she was in love with <laughs> Jacques, sir. Yes, yes. And, and Zena was, was in love, love with, with fishing. Oh. <laughs> no, that was the one where the, she was chasing the, the diamond thing. What was Zena in love with in the other one? Because remember that's the one where Maybe Gabrielle she was, was infatuated with. Or was herself. it Aries? Was she unaffected. Oh, no. Well, that's why we're watching This is exactly, it. yeah. People at home are going, you idiots. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's that. You call yourself in the <laughs> That's right, because the friends. arrow was, because uh, it hits Gabrielle. I don't think she was affected. I think the arrow hit Gabrielle and Zena. She was about to see Zena and right. then Joxer popped of up. Of course. And then the other arrow hit Draco. Or, we, or was Zena in love with Draco? I don't know. <gasps> I think she was in love with Draco. I think you're right. Or him, her. No. I think that's right. I think she, she was, was in love, love with, with him. Draco. He was in love with Because he was in love with her. Oh, that's right. She was in love with Draco. Who's in love with Gabrielle. Who's in love with Joxer. Joxer. Yeah. <laughs> Ten minutes later, we maybe figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got there. Yeah. Eventually. Maybe that's that fine. should be an episode that we watch. <laughs> yeah, maybe. First. <laughs> I think we're going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make our corrections next week. Oh, um, there's yeah. definitely going to be a corrections corner. <laughs> the, sorry, that was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure people will be very happy to correct us. Yeah, yes. <laughs> hey, we it's been a long time. Constructive We've been criticism. Doing yeah. <laughs> Wendy, tell me about your shirt. What are you wearing? Oh, uh, what are is... you wearing? <laughs> I'm wearing my Root and Shaw shirt from Person of Interest, oh. who uh, the show that um, captured my heart oh. and stuff. And tell me about it's... that show. I'm not. It's not coming to mind. You don't remember? Well, it started off as a, a procedural on CBS with Michael Emerson and Jim Caviezel okay. about uh, a, an artificial intelligence that has been created by Michael Emerson's character Finch. Hmm. And it, uh, it's to help like after 9-11 kind of filter through all the data out there, spy on everybody, uh, listen in on everybody, and pick up little things that might indicate where someone's going to kill someone else for the government, terrorist-wise hmm. or whatever. And but they kind of built in a system that it sends Finch the quote irrelevant numbers of like 
a jealous lover is going to kill someone. You know, that doesn't concern the nation, mm-hmm. but it's still a murder that they know is going to take place. And huh. so he and Jim Caviezel get these, it's just a social security number, and but it indicates who it is, and they have to investigate them. And are they the victim or the perpetrator? And then, you know, save the day, basically. Um, which all this came out before, all, like, the whole Snowden, they're spying on you kind of thing. It was like this completely fictional, AI, AI wasn't even a big thing when it mm-hmm. came out. And, but since then, it's kind of like, not that far from reality in a lot of ways. Yeah. That's not why I like the show as much. I mean, I like the show, <laughs> that part, but... I'm surprised uh, she even knows this much about the show other than... Hey, what- <laughs> here's the thing. It's my favorite show. I love the show and everything about it. My favorite part, there are a couple of characters, Root and Shaw, who were... Uh, one was a <laughs> psychopathic hacker that uh, talks to the machine, and one was a sociopathic <laughs> uh, former... She worked for the government. She ends up working for uh, Team Machine, as they call it, saving the day. And um, they end up together in a weird way that only person of interest could do it. And um, yeah, they they are the reason I like that show. And is this a a man and a woman, Wendy? No. no. What? What? They're both female. Oh. Played by... uh, (laughs) Played by a couple of uh, very talented actresses, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Sarah Shahi and Amy Acker. Um, and uh, yeah, and so it's my favorite show. Is it still on? No, oh, it was I'm sorry. sadly canceled. Uh, it, the last uh, episode was in 2016. Um, so, but you never know. Yeah. Might come back. They were both and, at uh, Clexicon last year, yeah. which is a great um lesbian sci-fi fantasy I've convention it's in vegas last year was the second Should one look it up. this yeah. year is coming up the third one nice that's another really fun convention if you're looking to go out and meet some people with similar interests nice uh, yeah yeah but, so i highly recommend person of interest it's the show actually takes it it goes from a procedural cbs but, but it, the, the the machine backstory is always there but it, it definitely morphs into a more arcing kind of sci-fi show it, it like around season uh late season two season three especially mm. midway through season three Taraji p henson was on it for the first oh, cool. two and a half years nice. um but yeah it went from a show that people like to a show that there are a lot of us that it's their favorite show very That's passionate awesome. about the show okay and uh, it's my thing right on. yeah tara what are you wearing <laughs> uh, i'm wearing a <laughs> lovely doctor who shirt it's actually the new 13th doctor the female doctor nice. um Played by Jody Whitaker, um, who we happen to the, uh, we go to Comic Con every year, Wendy and I, um, and this year we finally it was my first year in what, nine years to get into Hall H. So we got to see the women that's who like kick ass panel. Hall, right? Yeah, that's big a huge hall. one. Yeah. Um, so we got to see her um, before the, the new season started. Uh, so I've been a Doctor Who fan for a long time, um, but so when they essentially introduced that it was going to be a female. Of course, I was like, "Oh, what's what's this about?" Uh, so it was a <laughs> even more reason to watch it than I was already, you know, already had. So, yeah, I just I love the show. It's fun, um, you know. It's just, and now I can cosplay. So I, I showed, I went nice. to Comic Con for a day. <laughs> I dressed up as uh, as uh, the Thirteenth Doctor, but I also went as the Eleventh Doctor. So it doesn't really matter to me if it's male or female. <laughs> Um, it's just fun. So I got to, I wear my fez and my bow tie. Nice. Um, and now I got my little suspenders and jack. It's just, you know, I wish I could dress like this every day, honestly. Yeah. Um, Why if not? I, if You're I had LA. a job, I know. Nobody would notice. <laughs> I was okay with that. <laughs> I'm sure they would. I, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. Who but. would you cosplay as? Who would you dress as, Kat? Have you cosplayed have before? You? I've never cosplayed. I've thought about it. I'm trying to think who you would. I really like the only Xena cosplay I would want to do is a uh, Xena in Fallen Angel with the in the mm. Archangel costume. I just love that costume. It's a great co- yeah. Um I'm trying to think. Like who would you be good going as today? Yeah. Say you went to a a con. Yeah. I mean I could also do 13th Doctor. I've had the hair. The blonde hair. Okay. So I could I could do that one too. Yeah. We could both dress the same. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't either. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, I don't have a good answer for that. Yeah, we'll come back to it. Sadly. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Because, you know, it's good. depressing. <clears throat> we went to Comic-Con. Uh, the first year, we didn't dress up. And we thought, oh, yeah, we'll just wear nerd shirts. It'll be fun. Yeah. And then when you're there, you feel kind of sad when you're not dressed <laughs> up. Because, you know, I, and it, cosplay, the word, is, is still kind of feel strange for me to say. Because I'm just like, oh, I dress up as that, you know, for fun, whatever. Yeah. And now cosplay is like this whole 
thing and unto itself. Yeah, it's a very serious thing. But then, you know, we we went um, a couple more times. We dressed up like for one day for fun, just some random people. I think we I went firefly. as Mao. Yeah, oh, Firefly. Cool. And uh, some of my two friends, um, they came with us one year. And we went as Battlestar Galactica. So I went as Starbuck. Um, my Bad friend ass. happens to look like number six. And my other friend, uh, her girlfriend, looks like uh, number eight. So we have, like we look just like the characters. So we went with it. And we were like, you know what? That's cool. Yeah. So then. I was Colonel Ty. <laughs> Colonel Ty The over old here. man with an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't look awesome. like anyone on the show. So I just. Did you have like a bald cap? On no. I, I, did the, I did the Colonel Ty from when they were like on that planet for a while. And he had a, like a ski cap on. Got it. And. <laughs> Yeah, dressed nice. he had different outfit i didn't wear the uniform so i went as, yeah. and i carried around like a little flask or something because he was always drinking yes and i was like ah you know i was making the noise <laughs> and then we they were signing like um trisha helfer and uh, a few other people from the show were signing at a booth or taking photos and so another another couple of people dressed as battlestar people told us about it so we went oh, got cool. a big group picture with nice, yeah with the cast yeah we have this awesome picture of us with our like corresponding characters That's essentially cool. yeah <laughs> and i got to be with sam and we posed like a couple you know <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good yeah it was, it was a lot of fun so so then years after that you know some days we wouldn't go and then the next year we're like oh we can't we got to dress up we got to find something because it's sad when you go and then you're just you're not in the fun you're not in the fun of being dressed up yeah. and it's just a reason to go like you, you're sitting outside and you're eating i'm um, in the gas lamp quarter down there in san, san diego and you see like spider-man walk by <laughs> and then there's Wolverine, you know cal drogo down. from game of thrones walking down you know it's, it's a lot of fun so you get really get into it but. so i realize i lied oh. i have cosplayed Oh. But it wasn't for a convention, so I don't know if it counts. What was it? Was it just around the house? <laughs> <laughs> so for the re-release of A New Hope in 1997, oh. um, some friends and I went down to the Man Chinese Theater, and I, my mom made me a poncho, uh, an, uh, an indoor, indoor poncho. Indoor Leia. So it was indoor Leia, a very tall indoor Leia. And yeah, I had a fake braid wrapped around yeah. my head. I had some nice. khaki pants and a How old were you? 20. Oh, okay. Yeah, 20. And uh, I still have the poncho. There you go. Pull still. it out. <laughs> Pull it out. <laughs> and that's, I mean, you know, unfortunately, I'm a very, again, I'm very tall Leia. I don't have the right hair for Starbuck. Like, so, oh, most of my favorite characters, like Scully, I'm too tall. My hair is not hmm. red enough. Like, Xena seems like if I'm going yeah. to play towards yeah. what I, you know, my, what I look the most like, not to say that I look like Lucy, but it's kind of tall, Zena. dark hair. Tall, dark, yeah. I definitely had my Gabrielle Nietzsche of, I mean. Were you okay with blonde that? chicks from, yeah. Okay, I love good. dressing as Gabrielle. Oh, that was fun. No, I like dressing <laughs> as her. Um, but, uh, yeah, I finally told her mom. Because she, oh, cool. we, my friend and I went and saw her mom at uh, the restaurant that her her uh, husband owns in Threadgill. Uh, Threadgill's down in Austin. And we were talking to them. And I was like, you do know that I dressed as your daughter back in the day, don't you? She had no idea. She's such a sweetheart. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so. It's like, yeah, that, that was my thing. It was fun. But we'll have to we'll have to get you an outfit. Okay, great. Of some oh, sort. I'll, I'll bring feeling the Xena It'll outfit. be a lot easier for you to fit into the poncho uh, rather than the, my Xena costume. I, I don't think anyone uh, can ever get back in that thing. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, I had a friend ask, uh, write me on Instagram the other day and say, do you know anyone who might have a Xena costume that I can wear? I don't know why she needed it or what. Uh -huh. I didn't even know she was a big Xena fan or a Xena fan at all. But I said... Uh, well, I, I, I'm thinking I have one, but I don't think anyone can fit. I don't, I honestly don't know how, and it was this, this, this lady who had like a, a shop in the back of, it was like her shed and she lived in oh, our neighborhood made that yeah. made it. Yeah. She handmade, we Whoa. gave her like some pictures we said, oh, can you know, and we'd go and hmm. yeah, it was a, it was a deal, man. She was so awesome. And she had really, I don't even know if she had any idea what she was I making. Don't think she did. I don't think she did. <laughs> If she only knew. <laughs> and we made it with pleather, not real, you know, sure. animal friendly. Yes. Um, and cheaper. Yes. <laughs> and that. that was sure. yeah, a big factor. Yeah. So it, it is handcrafted That's and it's cool. it's held together pretty well. So and we used the real props that Wendy had, the breastplate and everything. Nice. So, and the wrist guards, I think, were mm -hmm. real props as well. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, wow. Gabrielle skirt was also Renee's actual skirt from just different props. We reached out to people and said, hey, if you have anything, can we use it That's awesome. for this? So Amazing. whatever we could. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, guys. I think I think we've done a lot of Xena talk. Yeah. More than I've done in years. I, I miss it. This is just like the tip of the iceberg, though. You got to get warmed up again. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we we're gonna th- well we'll hit on it every time. We'll have our little Xena whatever you decide we name it section. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, TBD. Talk about TBD. other various sci-fi things that are happening now. Things yes. we love. Things we um want to talk about of any sci-fi nature actors characters yes and reach out if you guys if there's a topic that you want us to talk about uh if you have any opinions on what we've already said uh tara how can people reach out to us well we (laughs) (laughs) have some social media going on uh we're on instagram at she nerds out podcast uh we are on facebook uh same she nerds out podcast um believe it or not um <laughs> oh. and uh we don't have a twitter but i don't, I don't know i don't know we that might, we need might not do that but yeah instagram <laughs> probably be our main go-to we'll be posting some pictures of what we're wearing um <laughs> of you know what we're watching maybe a little bit and yeah. maybe my dog and maybe my cat For sure. whoever whatever animals around um yeah just fun stuff we got going on and anything if you guys out there hopefully that are listening have any Anything you guys want to share as well, just send it to us and we can post it. Fan art. Yes, like that. for Anything sure. And creative. We're going to be talking crafts. We are. Maybe doing some crafts. We could do that. I'm very crafty. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I can I make stuff. enjoy that. <laughs> um, we love to share anything and make this very interactive. Yeah, for sure. We want to hear from you guys. We want to see what you're into and what, what you're watching and what you're into. And yeah, join our community. We have any, any parting words of wisdom. <laughs> wow you know what i don't I think i have of? any wisdom I, i'm offer. a huge alliteration <laughs> fan uh any wendy woody's words of wisdom huh wendy woody's <laughs> words of wisdom oh, yeah goodness. not to put you on the spot but I'm well putting, you i'm did. putting you on the spot well you did uh <laughs> hey i love sci-fi i'm happy to be here living in los angeles out of texas for the first time ever living and uh getting settled in and a whole lot of new exciting fun things that will hopefully come of that and including this podcast and I'm looking forward to talking sci-fi with these two fine ladies that I'm on this podcast with. And we all have our v- various interests and uh, sci-fi passions. And uh, I'm sure we will explore each and every one. And I look forward to that. Sounds good. Tantalizing tidbits from Tara next. <laughs> oh, well done. Damn. Okay. Um, Passing the uh, Yeah, I'll, the go, I'll go on with that and just try something new and this... This podcast has been something very new for us and trying to figure things out. So uh, please help us in any way that you can. <laughs> please be nice be pati- to us. patient with us. Be gentle. Yes, please um, be gentle. Yeah, but it, it's a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to being confused and not sure what I'm doing and figuring it out with uh, with you guys yeah. and having a lot of fun doing it. So. Fun is the is what, that's the goal. We want to have fun. And so far, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. Right. Especially when we do our happy hours, we'll have some fun. That's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, have like, it is. You have like Xena, uh, you know, themed cocktails. Yeah. Like, you Ooh, know. Nice. Remember the convention? They had the Xena Gabrielle drinks. Like what? In the back. It was like one was blue and one was green. I don't oh, know what funny. they, but one was a Xena drink. And they served them in the back of the convention hall. I don't remember. Alcoholic it was the drinks? Yeah. Oh. I, that's the only year I remember them doing that. It was at... Um, I don't remember. I, I don't remember was, anything from that <laughs> convention. Believe me, it was, it was Pasadena. And one of Deb and my movies was airing. And mm. I think it was the Xena one we did, True Love Never Dies. And a friend of ours, ours kept buying us drinks. Oh, boy. And, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I had some. And <laughs> yeah, I think that's the Couple. last year they sold drinks at the convention <laughs> in the actual convention room break, right? in the yeah. back of the where everybody was they learned it's their a lesson. fun idea at the time though <laughs> but yeah a blue one and a green one nice. Zena and the gabrielle let's just uh this is just suggestion for creation maybe for Do the it again. 25th yeah, yeah just have some bring drinks in, bring in the booze yeah <laughs> we're all older now we can handle it <laughs> some of us are older yeah some, some of, of us some of us 